Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Nigel sent me a crazy story out of Australia. Now, I'll admit, I don't know as much about Australian automobile insurance law as I ought to, but but I think that portions of the story, regardless, are so crazy that uh, they're something we should look at. From 9now, which is 9.com.au, mother's $6 million insurance bill nine years after car accident. So a woman was in a car accident nine years ago, nine years ago, and she just got a bill in the mail saying, hey, kindly remit $6 million. So Hannah Sinclair wrote the article for Nine Now, and uh, that car accident changed her life. We're talking about Samantha Melville, who's a mother of four. She's been sent a whopping $6 million bill from her insurance company, and they've given her 21 days to pay it. So if you can't scrape up the money right now, that's okay. you got three weeks. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway claims that Mrs. Melville's car was unroadworthy when it hit a tree during a hailstorm in 2012. Now, this is the first she's heard from them, but she said that she got the letter from Berkshire Hathaway, says, I need to pay $6.3 million in 21 days. This is just gobsmacking for this woman who wasn't speeding, who wasn't drinking, who wasn't on drugs, who was involved in a terrible accident, her lawyer said. Uh, Mrs. Melville's husband, Mike, said a lot of crying and a lot of sort of late nights and that sort of stuff, like enough's enough, you know. Uh, June 29, 2012 is the day that this happened. It's an ugly incident that she can never forget. But uh, she was 23 years old, and she was driving herself and a friend to work when she lost control in a severe storm and crashed into a tree in South Australia. Now, it was her brother's car. It was registered, and both she and her passenger were seriously injured. Uh, she has a brain injury. She broke her pelvis, her back. Uh, part for spine, and she is still to this day deaf in her left ear. Um, her recovery took months, and she's been through more, even just the recovery, than I think most people would in their lives, her husband said. Uh, it's certainly more than I've ever had to deal with. She had to learn to walk again, had to learn to count, just basic things that you take for granted. Nine years on, she thought, well, if nothing else, that accident is far behind me. Uh, but she still, of course, uh, is living with the scars from this. But um, after she got out of the hospital, she was charged with driving without due care and received a $400 fine. Now, that's very, very similar to what could happen to you in America. In most places, if you're in a car accident or a car crash, if you like that one better, uh, and no one else is involved. It's just you, the elements, and something you hit, a tree. You can get a ticket for that. And the ticket will be something like driving without due care. And you might say, why would they ticket you for that? Well, the thinking is that that something must have gone wrong. And, and there's a good chance that if you had done something more carefully, it wouldn't have gone wrong. And the question here is, what caused the problem? Was it something that she could have avoided? Because on the one hand, the police report said that there was severe wind, thunderstorms, rain and hail along the road. But the vehicle was then examined by mechanics and found to have both rear tires below the acceptable standard of tread, which, when combined with the prevalent weather conditions, contributed to the collision. So they examined the whole situation and said, look, the weather was involved, but bald tires were also involved. Uh, it also noted that the Holden sedan had been in for repairs just two months prior to the accident. Now, uh, the woman who was in the accident says, the lawyer I spoke to said they'd charge me with something so that the Motor Accident Commission would pay out the claim for the injuries for the person in the car. And so there's different kinds of insurance you have, and there's a type that you're required to have. And apparently in Australia, there's another type of insurance that kicks in depending on the situation. And uh, give you an example, in America, for instance, there's often what we call uninsured motorist coverage. So if you got hit by somebody who didn't have insurance, uh, your insurance might say, well, we're not going to cover you unless you have uninsured motorist coverage. It depends on the state you're in and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the point is, there's often different insurance coverage depending on who's making the claim and so on. The, 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 you know, In these situations, it could be the insurance covers the driver of the vehicle, it covers the passenger of the vehicle, and so on. And it might be that the insurance will only cover the passenger under certain circumstances. So... In 2014, 
She got a letter from an insurance carrier who at the time was the Motor Accident Commission's claims manager saying, it is our understanding that at the time of the accident, you drove a vehicle that's unsafe, unroadworthy, and in a damaged condition. So she called them because their number was on the letter, and they said, don't worry about it. It's all covered under Motor Accident Commission. So apparently, it's being covered by somebody. They assured us it is all done. There'd be no further proceedings or anything, the husband said. And that was, of course, uh, 2014. Here we are in 2021. And now she received a letter from insurance company Berkshire Hathaway, who took over the claim saying, we refer to our previous letter dated February 10th, 2014, a copy of which is enclosed. And would you kindly pay $6,312,399.83? Uh, the reporter asked her, did you find it strange that a letter demanding $6.3 million came in the mail with no phone call? Uh, she said, yeah, and there was no name and no signature on the letter either. And when asked what was her initial reaction to that, she said, well, I knew I had the car accident. So I was like, maybe it's real. But I also thought maybe it's a scam. So she called the police and they told her it was a scam and I reported it to Scam Watch. And Berkshire Hathaway is not very happy I did that. She called Berkshire Hathaway, and they just pretty much were laughing at me on the phone and told me that they have to negotiate and that I've just tried to get advice from lawyers since then, and no one's helping. Now, she did get a lawyer to help her, but they also did send her an itemization of what the $6.3 million was for. Among the fees they want to be reimbursed for is $55,000 for surveillance, for surveillance, Uh, $9,544 for factual investigations, and a million dollars in legal fees. Now, apparently there was a court case, and she said she did not know about the court case, meaning that apparently the passenger in the car filed a legal action, but somehow she was never involved in that. So there's an attorney named Nick Xenophon who has agreed to take the case for free and work with her trying to resolve this, and he asks... Why do we have our compulsory third-party insurance if it isn't for cases such as this? Obviously, there's a significant payout for the other person who was injured. I understand that. What I don't understand is why they're pursuing her because it was an accident. This is why you have compulsory third-party insurance. The risk here is if this case becomes a precedent, it sends a chilling message to anyone who's on the road who's involved in an accident that they could be chased by the compulsory third-party insurer for damages. The U.S. company Berkshire Hathaway, pursuing her, has only recently bought into Australia's lucrative car insurance industry and apparently brought with them a dogged attitude to debt collecting. The response from Berkshire Hathaway in regards to the bill was no comment. The insurer's CEO, of course, is Warren Buffett, who is one of the world's richest men, and he's built his public persona around caring for the less fortunate. Um, So it turns out, that the date for her to pay the $6.3 million came and went. That would be May 26th. And uh, they asked her, are you scared they might take your house? And she said, yeah, that's what the lawyers have said to me pretty much. All that they have said is that they can take the house and then make me go bankrupt, and that's it. So, again, I don't know about Australian bankruptcy laws, uh, but in America, uh, it's a little more difficult to take someone's house, but you can pretty much take everything else. Or you can simply force them into bankruptcy. And the question is, how many, you know, what kind of assets have you got, or how many things have you got that are worth money? Uh, how much stuff have you got? But six point three million dollars is not the kind of bill the average person can pay. But again, here we have a situation where she hit a tree. She had insurance on her car, and the way the insurance works is a third party that picks up coverage for certain kinds of claims and injuries made by people relating to these accidents. And it appears that that's what happened with the passenger in her car. Now we don't know how much money was paid to the passenger. But they're saying that $6.3 million is everything involved in that claim, investigations and surveillance and whatever else. And so they are saying, now we want that money back. And the scary part about this, of course, is that it happens nine years after the accident. And in America, again, and I'm sure in Australia, there are statutes of limitation for collecting debts. But the question is, when did this debt become something that was collectible? Because it wouldn't have happened the day of the accident, which was nine years ago. It may have been on the date of the insurance payout, which is probably a couple of years later, assuming that Australian courts act as swiftly as American courts do. So uh, the real issue here is 
that a woman's in an accident, has very, very serious injuries. And a couple years later, she's told, you're all set. Don't worry about it. Move on with your life. Seven years after that, she's then told, oh, you owe $6.3 million, please. You get three weeks, cut us a check. <laughs> That's the weird part. You would think if there was actually this thing looming over you, that somebody would tell you, by the way, this thing is looming over you. you you'd think, you'd think. But again, like I said, I don't know as much about Australian automobile insurance law as I ought to. So there you go. Crazy story from 9now or 9.com.au. Hannah Sinclair wrote it. Mother's $6 million insurance bill nine years after the car accident. Nigel, thanks for sending it. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. True solitude is found in the wild places where no one is without human obligation. One's inner voices become audible.